Welcome everybody to a new let's play. Um, I have no idea whether or not this is going to be a long one, but uh, I've been wanting to start this for quite a while. This is one ag once again a very old game. I guess it's about 20 years old now. It's maybe it's in the anniversary. I could have done a little bit more research on it. But this is Sid Meier's Colonization, and it's the original one. It's not the remake that came out um, about a year ago, maybe a little longer. Um, I didn't like that very much to be honest. I think this one has a lot of atmosphere and it's a very fun game. And without further ado, let's get started. This is a bit like Civilization. I think it came out uh, shortly after the original uh, Civilization game. Um, but it doesn't have any research or stuff like that in it. You play one of four nations and you colonize America, which is pretty much what it's about. Uh, let's make a random world. Let's have lots of landmass. Cool weather patterns, uh, wet, so I have lots of rivers and stuff. And I'll play on the highest difficulty level this game can offer. Not because I am that great at this game, because well, I don't really know. I haven't played in a while, but uh, I know the game very well. Um, so let's provide a little challenge. I've never played on this difficulty level, except for the sound check I did uh, last night. Uh, so I don't know much about it, except the fact that I don't start out with any money. Now you can choose either England, France, Spain or the Netherlands and uh, well, I'll be playing the only option really, for obvious reasons. And my name is not Mr. De Ruiter, it is Battle Bunny. Oh, excuse me, I just woke up so uh, my brain needs to kickstart. Battle Bunny, there we go. The Protestant Dutch provinces gained their independence from Catholic Spain during the Age of Expansion, a maritime country of fishermen and merchants, the Dutch Netherlands operated large merchant and fishing fleets in the North Sea and the Baltic. Upon achieving political independence in the early 17th century, this tiny nation found itself ideally poised to expand its overseas trade into lucrative new markets in the Far East and the New World. Yeah, some of those markets were uh, not very ethical, but well, maybe more on that later. It's the, this game is pretty ethical except for the fact that uh, well, you can really uh, exploit or maybe even kill the Indians. Uh, but we'll get to that. Unlike their rivals and sometimes enemies of the Spanish, uh, French and English, the Dutch were ruled by their merchant class. This unique arrangement led them to focus all aspects of the state diplomatic, military and economic policy around the interests of trade. Their strategy proved quite successful and the Dutch economy and merchant fleet expanded so rapidly that the other European powers felt compelled to take drastic measures against the Dutch in order to prop their own less successful enterprise. Pretty much an economic powerhouse and it translates into a game like this. To represent the strength of the Dutch economy as well as Dutch achievements in shipping, commerce and banking, the Dutch player receives a bonus when trading with Amsterdam. Commodity prices in Amsterdam do not collapse as quickly. And they recover more quickly, so the economy is pretty much more stable. And also, it doesn't specify here, but you can start off with a bigger ship than the other nations. The others start with, out with a caravel, which has a cargo space of two. And I will start off with a merchantman, which has a cargo space of four. The year of our lord, 1492. An audience with the stadtholder. For the greater glory of the Netherlands, we dub the Viceroy of the New World. Go and explore this new land. Settle it and bring... Wealth and glory to yourself and our nation. This music, by the way, <laughs> it's been known to cause brain damage and infertility and all that. Uh, it either grows on you and you like it, or your brain eventually filters it out and you don't really hear it anymore, or you'll just go bananas. Uh, I kind of like it, so uh, for the moment, I will definitely leave it on. Now there's our merchantman being loaded, we're going to the new world and uh, start settling it. Like I said, I know the game pretty well. I will try to find me uh, a nice piece of land to start on. I will actually take some time scouting around if I don't find anything uh, nice right away. And uh, at least for the start I will be very nice to the Indians. Except for the fact that I will bleed them dry for every penny they have. But well, that, that's just me being nice to them. Uh, eventually, I'm I'm not too sure what I'll do. If I get into a pickle and I need uh, lots of money, I might exterminate a tribe or two at some point. But, eh, that's just a little bit of history repeating. Let's call it that. 
We'll increase the cycles of the DOS box a little. And there we go. To establish colonies. We have pioneers and soldiers. Basically we have a guy carrying tools and a guy carrying guns. Um, to found our first city with. And we start out with zero money. So what I'll do is I'll sell the guns to the um, nearest Indian tribe. And use that to... Um, to get us going, because, uh, well, we need money to, st to get started. Your ship can uh, just sail back to Amsterdam, back and forth, pick up equipment, cargo, people, stuff like that. And here we are. Discovery of the New World. I shall just call it New Netherlands, it's fine. Which Indians are this? The Iroquois. I, th I think I pronounced it right, huh? Here we I like them. And also I like this uh, starting location uh, from the looks of it. Definitely. We have found ourselves a new home. Uh, a second thought. Let's stick around. I want those guns. Meeting the natives. They have 15 villages. To celebrate our friendship, we generously offer you the land you now occupy. Oh, thank you. Kind of already took it. Would you accept our treaty and live with us in peace? Sure. Let us smoke a peace pipe. I, I just quit smoking, but okay, fine. Make an exception. We hope you just... Uh, sorry, we hope you will visit uh, Iroquois villages and share knowledge. Send your wagon trains to trade with us. I hope I get your capital is located on the coast, my friend. Because then I'll just send my ships. New Amsterdam is a bit too long for me. I'll just call it Maine because it's our main colony. And uh, let's start ringing those liberty bells. <laughs> and why do you ask? Well, uh, it is kind of important to get uh, lots of liberty bells soon because you can uh, pretty much get these guys. The Continental Congress will expand during its next session, Your Excellency. Which founding father shall we appoint as its next member? Every single one of this, uh, these people give a small little bonus. Like, for instance, Thomas Jefferson. He makes Liberty Bell in uh, production increase. Or, for instance, Henry Hudson. Increases the output of all fur trappers by 100%. The guy I want from this uh, particular uh, lineup is this guy. Peter Minui. The Indians no longer demand payment for the land. You can just take their land and they won't really object anymore. They won't like it, but well. Here we are. Now let's find ourselves an Indian village. And sell them our guns. I guess about 400 will do. Let's haggle a little. Uh, 300 will do because the price isn't rising that fast. 300 it is. I'm not buying anything, thank you. I do have a little nasty cold again. Damn bloody Dutch weather. So I don't hope you mind me sniffing. And my voice is a little broken, but oh, it'll have to do. Now send my ship back to Amsterdam. Um, excellent. Petty criminals appear on the docks in Amsterdam. I'm not too happy with the fact that they are criminals, but uh, I can just slap some horses on this uh, this guy over here. He's actually, uh, he's not carrying a radio, He's uh, he's got his hands locked in a little a wooden block. Um, and equipped with horses, there we go. 150 gold left. I guess I could buy 70 tools. Yeah. Now scout is important, I can use it to visit um, Indian villages. Sons of Liberty membership in Maine is up to 10%. And we cleared a, a forest, that's because I was um, plowing the area of this uh, of the city I built. Or the colony, how you want to call it. Oh, crap. Oh, excellent! I'm right next to the capital. Doesn't look to be on the coast though, but uh, wow, that's close by. That's very, very good. Yeah, let's uh, sail around a little. Let's see if I... Uh, no, it's not on the coast. Well, it could still be... No. Um, 
I'll, I just wasted uh, two turns walking there, but uh, I'll get back to the town. Now, every single Indian village can train in the profession, but all the villages only train one, uh, one guy, pretty much, except for the capital. And this, this particular village gives me expert fishermen. And they want cloth, rum and cigars. I don't have anything. But they do give me money. Thank you. That's uh, the best you can hope for when visiting Indian villages. Sometimes they just give you loads and loads of cash. Well, let's uh, upgrade uh, the ground beneath our capital city a little bit more. So it g yields a bit more f uh, food. That looks to be a pretty big island. These are like little goody huts. Sometimes you find uh, good stuff, sometimes bad. The capital trains expert farmers, wants tobacco, tools and trade goods. That's just excellent. It's a shame they're not located on the coast. I will need a wagon train at some point. Indentured servants are now available in Amsterdam. And that Sons of Liberty membership, uh, I probably could just switch off the messages because this is just because I'm ringing the Liberty Bells and people are starting to think about independence already. Uh, it's a long, long, long way out, so... The other village to the left, also expert farmers, tools, rum and coats. I will definitely be friendly with these Indians because uh, their cities are located pretty good for trade once I get a wagon train. I'm guessing uh, I know plenty about the coastline now. This is a big ass island. I will just uh, try and sell these tools. And go back home. Expert ore miners. Rum. Seems mostly they want tobacco. So I should probably get a shipment of tobacco over here. And uh, create some addicts over here. Okay, now this uh, village has been plowed. Which means that it will now yield some cotton. It's pretty good. I will chop my wood on this little piece of forest over here. Excellent, we're finding some money early on. That's the best thing you can hope for. And there's our first founding father. That's him right there. Peter Minui. Now I can just pretty much claim all the land uh, right away. Let's see if these guys actually want to buy my tools. Sometimes your music is pretty good, sometimes it's, uh, <laughs> well, it's like this. Right, we can pick our next one. Uh, I tend to go for the trade guys at first. But Adam Smith gives factory buildings, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. Which is uh, not very handy early on. This guy makes colonists pick up any weapons that might be lying around if they get attacked. Very handy. Benjamin Franklin. Uh, might be a good one actually. Yeah, I'll go for Mr. Franklin. I actually want to buy it, but not for enough money. Another Indian tribe, the Cherokee. They have the same level of advancement as the Iroquois. They live in the same kind of huts. There are pretty much three level of advancements. I already found the Tupi over here, or Sioux. These are the lowest ones you can find. Don't have enough money and stuff like that. Then there's the mid-level ones, <laughs> like uh, the Iroquois and uh, the Arawaks and stuff like that. 
I think I'll call this a video right here because I can feel a very big sneeze coming on. I will see you in the next and I'll blow my nose. <laughs>